a sudden, intense, piercing pain behind one eye, a runny or congested nose, a red and watering eye with drooping eyelid, forehead or facial sweating and restlessness or agitation. A cluster headache can include any of these symptoms, and that's also only on one side of the face. While the searing, debilitating pain is the most defining feature of a cluster headache, the word headache barely describes the full range of experiences. So what exactly is a cluster headache? What's happening in the brain and body during an attack? Let's discuss this all in this video. To trace the cause of a cluster headache, we need to know what's happening during this pain. We know a cluster headache typically strikes suddenly, often at the same time each day or night. The pain is commonly felt around one eye and can be accompanied by other symptoms like a swollen or drooping eyelid, facial sweating, a constricted pupil and a stuffy or runny nose on the same side of the headache. These symptoms point to a particular area of the brain, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus regulates our body's internal clock, which is why cluster headaches are often known for their alarm clock pattern, striking at nearly the same times each day. It also plays a role in controlling the autonomic nervous system, which regulates tear production and nasal congestion, explaining many of the symptoms seen during an attack. While we don't know exactly what activates a cluster headache, one suspect is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve transmits sensations from the face to the brain, including pain signals. During a cluster headache, this nerve becomes hypersensitive, sending intense, sharp pain around the eye, sometimes radiating to the face, head and neck. This pain can be so excruciating that it's often described as the worst type of headache known to medicine. Unlike migraines, cluster headaches don't typically cause nausea or visual disturbances, and they are not associated with aura, which is feeling of symptoms earlier than they happen. Also, their attacks are shorter, usually lasting between 15 minutes to three hours and occurring in clusters over a period of weeks or months. Cluster headaches are less common than migraines, affecting less than 1% of the population. Interestingly, they are more common in men than in women, and typically begin between the ages of 20 and 50. But we do know that certain triggers, like alcohol, strong smells or changes in sleep patterns, can provoke attacks during a cluster period. While there's no cure for cluster headaches, treatments are focused on decreasing the intensity of pain, shorten the duration of pain and prevent new attacks. Things like inhaling 100% oxygen through a mask for about 15 to 20 minutes, using injectable or nasal triptans or a shot of octorotide does help in decreasing the severity and duration of pain. However, medication such as calcium channel blockers, such as veripamil, prevents cluster headache from coming back. Despite our growing understanding of this condition, the exact mechanisms behind cluster headaches are still not fully known. We do know that they are much more than just a headache. Cluster headaches are a complex neurological disorder that involves multiple parts of the brain and nervous system. And although the pain may come and go in cycles, the impact on a person's life can be profound. One thing is for certain, cluster headaches are a distinct and intense experience, reminding us just how intricate and sensitive our brains truly are.